Welcome to Our Lady Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti. So glad that you're joining us for Palm Sunday, known as Passion Sunday, in which we remember the suffering, death, and also ultimately the resurrection of our Lord. Please join me in praying in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. Let's, as always, take a moment of peace to look into our hearts and to confess our sins. As we celebrate the Prince of Peace, let's remember the times we have not been instruments of peace. For those times, Lord, have mercy. As we pray for Jesus this week as he offers his suffering for us, we remember those times we have turned from the challenges of our faith and instead have chosen the easier path. When we fail to be like the courageous Jesus, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And for the good we mean to do, the good intentions, the sins of omission, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And so we pray. Almighty God, we pray that you will increase the faith of your people as we this holy week truly pray to your Son that we might honor Christ our triumphant King by living as he did, by suffering for the sake of love, by ultimately rising with him. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Him. 
All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him. All you descendants of Israel, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, 
but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Elo, Elo, lava sabachthani. Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who, who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes down to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Thank you for joining us on Passion Sunday, Palm Sunday. Uh, very, very important, the beginning of Holy Week, a time in which we focus on the great sacrifice made by our Lord and ultimately his conquest of death, but how much he loved us, willing to, to die a truly painful death for you and for me because of the love he had and his desire that we should be redeemed and share heaven with him. Just a couple of thoughts, if I can, on these readings. First, that Old Testament reading heard from Isaiah, there are two things as we prepare for Holy Week that I would focus on. One is when we hear, speak to the weary. You know, whenever there are holidays, like major holidays, like Easter, there are always people around us who aren't where we are at. They're, they're fighting weariness. They're fighting loneliness. They may have had their hearts broken. They may have been so battered by life that they're willing to give up. I always think that we who are given the very meaning of joy and hope during the Easter season should especially reach out to those around us who have no hope, who have grown world weary. Some place on your block, some place in your family, some place in the long list of your friends, there are people who are not feeling any joy in their hearts. They've in some ways given up on life. I met just this week with a wonderful woman whose son has been battling drug addiction and she's been so dedicated and so faithful to him, but sooner or later your hopeful energy runs dry and she was at that point. There are so many weary people around us and we're being told in Isaiah, like the Lord, our job is to extend ourselves in love and caring and concern to those who in this joyful season of our redemption aren't feeling so redeemed or so hopeful. There's another thing in this first reading that I love. Uh, I gave my back to them who beat me. You know, this is the prediction obviously that our Lord would suffer what he does on the day of his crucifixion. Uh, and we're being told this long before he died in the book of Isaiah. But I think the important message for us is we're called on not to fight back to those who would abuse us, uh, not to be unwilling to forgive and be instruments of peace to people who put us through a lot. And I think all of us know people in our lives who have caused us suffering, difficulty. And of course, what we humanly want to do is strike back we're being told by the example of Christ, predicted in the book of Isaiah, that the holy person is willing to accept the blows and still forgive and still love. There are two people I'd ask you to pray for in particular, too. I happen to know, I know there are others in jail, but uh, John Hinshaw and uh, Joan Andrews Bell are two people who went to an abortion clinic where they do abortions into the seventh month. And all they did was go there to pray, but they went inside, and that's against the law, were arrested and are now facing many years in prison, not for hurting anyone, but simply for saying as long as unborn children are being terminated in the sixth and seventh month, 
someone must inter intervene for them, someone must pray for them. So they went to an abortion clinic, didn't hurt anybody, they just entered it and prayed. And in doing that, they are now facing long prison terms. That's to me the embodiment of what we're hearing in Isaiah. When people come at us, when they are nasty and evil to us, we can return evil with evil, or we can, if we truly embrace the Christ, be willing to accept the pain for the sake of our redemption and the redemption of others. Let's just go for a moment to that second reading of St. Paul to the Philippians. Jesus, we are told by St. Paul, emptied himself for you and me. That whole concept of emptying yourself where you don't have anything left. I am certain that I'm talking right now to some moms and dads and grandparents and family members who have sometimes been worn out by going to work every day and trying to support a family and trying to raise up good kids and it just wears you down and it wears you out and some days you say I don't think I have the energy to take that next step and when we feel that weariness it's good for us to remember the Christ who emptied himself out of love for you and me that's who we celebrate this week he emptied himself just like you do day in and day out because of the love you have for people who are dearest to you when you are weary, when you are emptied out, just know you are truly very, very much walking a path parallel to Christ himself. The other thing St. Paul talks about that I wanted to focus on was, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend. And all I'm saying by that is, Holy Week of all weeks is a good week for us to recapture reverence. You know, I love that we all come into church and we're comfortable with being in church, and that's as it should be. But I wonder if in becoming more comfortable in the presence of the Lord, we sometimes forget the act of reverence. You know, when I was growing up, and many of you will know what I'm talking about, you wouldn't think of entering a, entering a church or going past the tabernacle where the real presence of the Lord exists without genuflecting or at least bowing. And yet now people walk on by chatting away as if no one's there, but he is. And because of his sacrifice and his love for us, we're called on to give him reverence. You know, uh, I'm old enough that I remember never going by a church without making the sign of the cross. It's just a way of saying, Lord, I know you exist, and I know you're in there, in that church, in that tabernacle. And I offer you reverence. And why? Because of the way in which you suffered and died for me personally. And I want in some way to give you reverence as a way of saying thank you for your love and to return that love by acts of respect and reverence and obedience. Finally, that gospel... You know, the whole story of the Passion, it seems to me, is a reminder of the fact that we, all of us, tend to hesitate about being all in. I've often called uh, Palm Sunday the Feast of Fickleness. A fickle person says they're with you, but they're really not. They promise the world and they don't deliver. And I mention that because that's what's happening here. You know that Jesus enters Jerusalem on this day, and they are greeting him with palm, which was their version of confetti back then. We all give out palm on Palm Sunday. Why? To remind ourselves of the people of Jerusalem who cheered for Jesus. Hosanna, the King, the one we've been waiting for, the expected Messiah. Those same people, just a few short days from now on Good Friday, will be yelling, crucify him, crucify him. How could it be? How could people be on your side on Sunday and turn against you by Friday? Well, much as we can condemn those people over 2,000 years ago, I think we do the same when we embrace our own fickleness. When we say, I'm a Catholic Christian, as long as it fits. I'm a Catholic Christian, as long as you're not asking too much of me. We're either going to be like those people in Jerusalem who say one thing and do another, or we're going to be better than that. And Holy Week is the time for every believer to say, I won't be partially in. I'll be all in. Lord, I am all yours. Totus tuus. I am all yours. I'm with you now, and I will be with you forever, and I will not compromise my love for you out of gratitude for the love you had for me that you would not compromise even unto the point of death. Together, let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With trust in his goodness, let's now turn to the Lord with our prayers of petition. And the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christians may embrace the joy of this holy week with a commitment to repent of past sins and strive for holiness, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That church leaders may proclaim with courage and conviction the gospel of Christ crucified, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That the crucifixion of Christ for all people may teach us that there is no such thing as a worthless life or of a person that God does not love, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Patricia Valdaro, Paulette Sewell, Patricia Carbone, babies Carmela and Liliana Arnone, Peggy Folan, Marie Tenay, we pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, especially Josephine Lucy de Geronimo, Joseph Monaco, Michael Patrick Esposito, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the intention of this Mass, for James S. Bobrowski, Angela de Sigli, Salvatore D'Agostino, Vincent Castratoro, the intention of members of Sons of Italy, Columbus Lodge 2143. Margaret Jandovitz, Irene Romano, Third Anniversary, Souls of Babies Lost Through Miscarriage, Anne Spinella, and Vincent Castratoro. Whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let me, if I can, add some prayers for those who are sick. We began this new list in Advent. Jose Joe Senna, Glenn Hudson, Joe Falgiano. I pray for Bertica of Seattle. I pray for Tom and Randy Slade and Kathy Bordengo, for Judge Anthony Falanga, Eddie Mullins, Mary O'Brien, Tommy Burt, Tom and Patty Yanch, for Katie O'Connor and Angelo and Al Clemente, for Leanne Lasanti and Kimberly Cusack and Christine Bauman, for Michelle Leonhardt and Russell Castro Giovanni, for Vincent Brienzi Jr., for Roy Citrano and Sam Maggio, for Susie and Vinnie Vignardi, for Richard Monaco and Herb Stouter, for Judy Alaco, for uh, Larry Meyer and Richard Cardone, for Janet Chevelle and Robert Telasco, for Thomas Mistretta, Michael Hellenum. I pray for Carmela, Catherine, and also Liliana Marie, those beautiful twins who have been born with health problems. I pray for Michael, who's battling leukemia, as well as Sandra Slater. I also pray for Anne Marie de Blasio and Linda Medrigo and Dario Rivera. Pray for Michael Chanover and Carol Paulo uh, Ashandi, Kelly Lay Skibalia, for Virginia Rivera, Barbara and Ken Barcenti, for Marie and Ken Johnson and family, for Tommy Swengross, for Sarah, also known as Sally Belfi, for uh, Paulette Sewell, Terry and John Schiara, Maria and Bob Cariola, Melissa Olberg, Sal Manzo, Larry Lewis, for the Paratine and McShea families, Velio Bronzini, for Jack Campbell, I pray as well for Mrs. Kalinowski, Linda and Frank Rosado, and among the sick I include Ben Seminella, uh, George Rumi, as well as Ralph Woythela, my dear friend in Florida. There are others that have come in. I want to mention as well among the sick. Uh, please add Cora Tess Wilson to your prayer list, a 10-year-old who is battling cancer. For Cora Tess Wilson, we're praying for you. 
I pray as well, once again, for Richard Cardone and for all who suffer from any kind of dementia or Alzheimer's. I pray for all those who are suffering from uh, any addiction, but especially those addicted to drugs or alcohol. I pray for Darlene DeChico, who is recovering from a very bad fall. I pray as well among those who are sick and in need of our prayers for one more here. Oh yeah, that was the twins again who we already prayed for. And then if I can please pray for those who have passed from this life to the next. Um, if you'll bear with me for just a moment. Okay. Those who have died I've been asked to pray for include Richard Jennings, Craig Scott, Bessie and TC Center, Thomas Minter, Minter, Roland Rossi, Jenna Tuller, Margie Smith, Tessie Teresa Palmo, Phil Cordero, Frankie Cazetto, Isabella Glauda, Billy and Michael Sarasoli, their dad, Billy Sarasoli, Ray and Monica Carrison, Margaret O'Connor Lasanti, Bridget Clementi, Cecilia and Nicholas Lasanti, Irene and Tom Romano, Ed June and Eddie Jandibitz, Beverly Maggio, Regina Brighton, uh, Justino Joe Amarin, Tom Sully O'Sullivan, Alfred John Sicali, Emilio Alaco, Paul Struzzieri, Maria and Albert Cavelli, Anna and Gary Gomes, all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, Diana Mistretta, James and Rita Volpe, Joseph Sardone, Gina Pelletier, for Emily Lafaso. I pray for James Jim Bobrowski. I pray too as well for Chris Baumler, for Betty Moore, Pauline Romano, Sylvia Christ, Beatrice Ferrari. Pray for Millie Paradiso and Mary Rockensees, for James C. Williams and Brian Hussey, Annette Salim Nitro and Judge Donald Belfi, Thomas Peter Lopresti, Joseph Wallweber. Pray for Dennis and Joe Cooney. I pray as well for um, Gerard Wallweber and Richard Jennings and Jamie Scotto and Pam Amodio. Pray for um, Chris Baumler and Pauline McKenzie, her parents. I pray too for Jeanette Chanover and Rosalie Salko and Gussie Sino and for John, Helen and Luke. In addition to all those I've already mentioned, I'd like to add some intentions that have come in. Uh, I just received this one. I want to pray for Maria Arivia uh, Bruweiler, my friend out in Arkansas. Maria has any number of physical difficulties and she's asking us to pray for her healing grace. So I pray for uh, Maria Arivia Bruweiler. And I also want to pray for her great nephew, uh, Seth. He has been, uh, he's a two-year-old who has been kidnapped and we're praying for his safe return. So he's two years old and we pray for Seth, Arivia, um, Aliva, Alba. I also want to pray for another intention that just came in. This is a letter just that I received. Uh, this is a wonderful woman we're praying for, uh, Diane Carew. And she had battled and uh, seemingly beaten uh, her battle with cancer and it has returned and uh, it's knocking her out and so we want to pray for Diane and I'm so glad it was brought to my attention by her good friend Kathleen so we're definitely keeping her in prayer and let me pray too for a few more people who are physically challenged and we want to pray for their healing and for their caretakers I pray for Joel Falgiano and Kathy Bordenga for Anthony Falanga and Marie Tenay pray for Chuck Mish as well as Vinny Rissiuti I pray for Josephine Romano and her well-being, and for Diane Nagel, who's faced a serious health challenge. For Therese Cipolla and Anthony Lusich, I pray for my friend Rita and her challenges. Pray for Frank Savino. I had the privilege of visiting Frank this week in the hospital, and we're praying for a full recovery, Frank. I pray for Bill DeVito. He's the uh, dad of my friend Martha, and he's uh, had a, a really tough week, and we're praying for his well-being, too. So we pray as well for Bill DeVito, as well as Henry Skoros, Rebecca, and Bertika of Seattle. That's a mom and a daughter. So we pray for Bertika, the mom, and Rebecca, the daughter, out in Seattle. And I want to pray for William Jurors and everyone who battles addiction of any kind. I pray for uh, Nina Swingros as we celebrate this week her 90th birthday. I pray for Caleb, who turned two years old, and Matthew, who turned 40 years old. And among those who have died, I want to remember 
Byron Janus, a wonderful man married to Maria uh, Cooper Janus. Among those who've died, I'm also asked to pray this week, especially for Michael Manzella and Emily Lofaso, Pat Sestar. I pray for Andrew Couric, for Ferdinand Labolita, for Chris Baumler, for Gina Pelletier, and for Beatrice Ferrari, for Mikey Esposito. Pray as always for my mom, Cecilia, and my dad, Nick. I pray for George and Joan Scagnamiglio, as well as Nick Martone and Mike and Gary Scorcia and Nicole Toussaint, the beautiful woman who passed away a year ago. For Joe Monaco, wonderful man, married to his wife 75 years, now he's gone home to heaven. And finally for Ralph Woythaler. And I pray too for all the special intentions that you know mean so much to us. For our first responders, police, firefighters, EMTs, for our men and women in the armed forces. Pray for doctors, nurses, and orderlies and those keeping us healthy. I pray for peace throughout the world, for an end to the violence being done against the people of Ukraine, for the freedom of our friends in Taiwan and Hong Kong. I pray finally for an end to all violence and all hatred in the Holy Land. And I pray too for your special intentions in mind, most especially that this Holy Week and for throughout the year, we will embrace our faith and live it fully. In that hope, let's turn to the Mother of God and say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Let us be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord God, may the suffering and death of Jesus, your son, make us pleasing to you. We know that alone we can do nothing, but may this perfect sacrifice win us your mercy and your love. And we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise. You never cease to call us to a new and more abundant life. God of love and mercy, you are always ready to forgive. We know we are sinners, and yet you invite us to trust in your mercy. Time and time again, we broke your covenant, but you never abandoned us. Instead, through your Son, Jesus the Lord, you bind yourself even more closely to the human family by a bond that can never be broken. Now, in this holy season, this Passion Week, your people, uh, we turn back to you and so are renewed in Christ your Son. This week is a time of grace and reconciliation. In wonder and with gratitude, we join our voices with the choirs of heaven to proclaim the power of your love and to sing of our salvation in Christ. God of power and might, we praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretch out to us who are sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. 
God, our Heavenly Father, we've often wandered far from you, but through your Son, Jesus, you have brought us back. You gave him up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way in love to one another. Therefore, we celebrate today the love and reconciliation Christ has gained for us, and we ask you to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine by the power of your Holy Spirit so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. While he was at supper on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Lord our God, your Son has entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection. We look forward to the day, that coming of the day when he will return to bring us all the fullness of joy. Therefore, we offer you, God, ever faithful and true, this sacrifice which restores us to your friendship. Fill us with his spirit through our sharing in this meal, Lord, and may he take away all that divides us. May this same spirit of love keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You've gathered us here today around the table of your Son, in fellowship with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and all the saints. In that new world, where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race, every language, every way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. that we will be fully committed to Christ, that this Holy Week will be a time in which we truly come home to him and announce that we are his family now and forevermore. In that hope of being all in, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Amen. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I'll make these announcements very brief just to say we wish all of you a blessed Holy Week and to hope this will be a time in which we enter into the mystery of Jesus' death and resurrection more fully for all of us to be all in this week. For those of you who happen to be on Long Island, you're welcome obviously to join us here at Our Lady of Lourdes in person. You know that on Monday throughout all of the uh, New York area, probably throughout the country, uh, all parishes will be offering many more opportunities for confession. And uh, I encourage you, if you can, to, to go to the sacrament, the sacrament of healing, this wonderful gift that God gives us. That's Monday. And then to think about the possibility of going to your local church or just being with us here at Our Lady of Lourdes for Holy Thursday. Two wonderful things happen. We have the washing of the feet as a reminder of Jesus' call to be servants to all, but also it's the, the day in which we celebrate the institution of the Eucharist, when at the Last Supper Jesus gave this bread and wine, his body and blood to us, this enormously wonderful gift. It's also a day, uh, this week is actually a, a week in which they celebrate the Chrism Mass in most dioceses where uh, priests renew their promise and, and their vows. So pray for your priests and pray for all those in holy orders that they might be faithful and dedicated. Good Friday we know is the time which remember the, the ultimate gift that God gives us in dying for us and suffering his passion. Uh, in our parish at three o'clock there'll be a service but we'll also be online and hopefully you'll be with us one way or another. The vigil, Holy, Holy Saturday is the Easter vigil. There'll be people welcomed into the church for the first time. And then of course, Easter Sunday. Any way you can, don't let this week go by and worry about bunny rabbits and chocolate. Instead, focus on the thing that really matters. This is the most important week in the whole liturgical year because it's a time when we give thanks that Jesus has died and risen for you and for me. As always, I invite you to be with us on Personally Speaking. It's on the Catholic Channel 129, three times on Sunday, 7.30 in the morning, 9 in the morning, 2.30 in the afternoon, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, this week is Kelly O'Hara, a wonderful Catholic actress who's been nominated seven times for a Tony Award on Broadway as Best Actress. She's from Oklahoma and talks about what it means to be Irish Catholic and her work in the arts. And then next week, a wonderful interview with Charles Spencer, who at first you might not know that name, but he's Princess Diana's brother. And he's written a powerful book called A Very Private School about the physical 
and sexual abuse that he endured in that place. And finally, as an adult, coming to terms with that and trying to find healing. It was a wonderful interview with Charles Spencer next week and this week with Kelly O'Hara. Please join us on Personally Speaking. And just from all of us, have the most wonderful, wonderful Holy Week. Make it meaningful. Don't miss this opportunity to get closer to the heart of Christ. Let's pray. Lord God, you have satisfied our hunger with this Eucharistic food. The death of your Son gives us hope and it strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us a sense of perseverance to be true and may it lead us to our ultimate salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a solemn blessing at the end of Mass. At the end of each blessing, Jesus responds by the affirmation, Amen. The Father of mercies has given us an example of unselfish love and the suffering of his only Son, Jesus. Through our service to God and neighbor, may we receive his countless blessings. Amen. Amen. Lord, you believe, we believe, that by dying, Christ destroyed death forever. May he give us, each one of us, true and everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Jesus humbled himself for our sakes. May we follow his example and hope one day to share in the glory of his resurrection. Amen. And my friends, I ask Almighty God to bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me.